finished product and the drawing. Are those like little sunflowers? Is that what that's about? Yeah, yeah they're, they're little sunflowers down the bottom and a bigger one up top. And this is a picture for practice. This was one to see um, for some people, they've been with me for a year now doing this. And I, I really don't want you to get bored and not be challenged with some new projects. So this is a little more drawing. Um, the painting is fairly simple. We'll, we'll, um, you'll see that as we go along. It's so really by drawing the, the diagram first, it almost becomes a paint by number. So we do the, the coloring or the, uh, the drawing first and then add the color after. But this is not a project in perfection. So I'm not asking anybody to be perfect at this. Mine certainly isn't perfect. It's just something for fun. So I want you to relax and just, just breathe into it and just allow the paint to go where there are some specific things you might want to, to have the colors go, uh, go to, but it just, just enjoy this painting. And if you wish to, you've got the drawing so you can do it again if you like. And you can choose different colors. So just breathe, just breathe deeply and relax your shoulders. And we're just gonna take three deep breaths so breathe in and out, drop your shoulders as you do that. Breathe in again and two, drop your shoulders and three, breathe in, deep breath in and then just let it out. And again, let your shoulders just fall away from your ears. This is just for practice. We're not expecting perfection. We welcome you if you're new, and hopefully this is not too difficult. Normally I paint upright. Today I probably will lay my canvas flat to paint. So you'll see me doing that occasionally. And if there's certain techniques that I would like you to do, then I'll show you those techniques as we go along. So just like you are starting with a, a blank canvas with a drawn picture, I'm also going to do the same. So we're going to mix some colors together as well. Come up with different variations. So we'll start with the outside of the clock, this outer band. And we're going to do it in a green and blue mix. So I'm mixing a light blue. If you can see that, I'm mixing a light blue. Um, this, is a, this is a number three and it's a round touch. So there's a blue and I'm going to mix green with it. And it's just a lime color green. So it's a light green. I'm going to mix the two together. I'm going to actually add a little more blue to that. I want it to be more blue than green. I want it to almost be an aqua color. Which blue are you using? I'm using a, a sky blue, a, a, a ocean blue. It's very light. Okay. So I can show you that blue. This is the blue. Thank it's you. Not, it's not, um, there is a darker blue we could use, but I'm not going, it's, this is a darker blue. This one, I'm not using this dark blue. I'm using the lighter one. So I'm just mixing that with the green. And then I'm going to do the outside of the clock. So this band that's all around the clock. Well, this will take a little bit of time. We want to fill in that space that we drew that we drew from the drawing. So as I said, just like you, I'm starting with a blank canvas. And if I go outside of my lines, I'm really not too worried about it. This is just a piece of paper, just for practice. If you find you're holding your brush really tight right now, 
just take a deep breath and just relax that grip. I'm going around that little leg. So again, the hardest part of your, your artwork sometimes is doing the drawing. But once you have that drawing in, it's almost a matter of paint by number. Now, if any of you are ready, the next step is to do the outside band around the cloth in the same color, in that same green-blue mix. I'm, in, I'm really looking forward to be interesting to see what the results are uh, that everyone comes up with. I love to see your finished products. And if you go out of the lines, it's, it's just practice. There's no punishment. It's just for practice. It's just to learn new skills. Sometimes people go back and they look at their artwork and they critique, and that's part of learning. So then you can look and decide if you want to make changes for your next time. So we're working sort of systematically around the pro a project so that we have time for different things, different pieces or parts to dry. Now, if you're ready, we're going to move on to a brown. And I have brown on my palette. So I'm using just, just a regular brown. It can be deeper brown, it can be lighter brown. It's just a straight brown, no mixing of any other colors with it. So I'm making a, a little bit of a puddle, not too much, not too much water. This is a wet on dry project, so we're not getting the back wet and then letting the water flow. We're actually controlling where the water goes or where the paint goes. So the legs of the, because we're moving around so that certain things will dry, we're, going, we're hoping that the bottom where you've done your outer edge is dry and we're going to paint the little stand or the little legs of that stand that's holding up our clock. So it doesn't matter if it's a deeper brown and it doesn't, it, you know, with watercolor, it doesn't always have to be exactly even all the way along. And especially on this stand, if we want it to look more like it's a wooden stand, if it has a little bit of a wood grain look, that's okay if it's not completely filled in. So again, I was just looking for a happy little picture to do to, uh, to give us something different. Each week I try to come up with a new subject, a little bit different rather than for the whole month of March doing horses or something. Just give you a variety. And then you can go outside from here and try different things. So then you won't be afraid or thinking that, oh, you only know how to draw a river or you only know how to paint trees. Now you've got a number of different things that your brain can, can see that you've now accomplished. So that's the stand. So now we're going to move to the center of each of the flowers. So they all have a little round piece in them. So I'm going to go around these little yellow petals, just do the bottom around this little sunflower and leave those leaves or petals white for now. Are, are you using the same brush over and over? I'm using the same brush over and over. I may use the, the same brush my whole picture. Mm. But if you, you if you feel the need to use a smaller one to get into the tiny spaces, then, then by all means, go ahead. I just really am using the tip of my brush to fill in the circle. Kathy, I'm sorry I missed it. What color is that? It's really hard to tell. Is it brown? It is brown. Gotcha. I'll hold it closer. It is, it is brown. Oops. Thank you. You're welcome. 
A different brown than the legs or just a no, little more it's, water? It's the same brown, but I okay. guess with the, with the water I've added just on the end of my brush, it's just lightened up a little bit. But you can oh. go ahead and make it just as dark brown. So I'm doing the center of every flower in this brown color. So there's the little flowers with brown in the middle and the flower on the top with brown in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead now, we're going to use the lighter blue. I mixed a blue and a green together. And now I simply want that blue all by itself. I don't want to mix any other color with it. So I'm adding in a little bit of water to my blue. I'm just lightening it up. I just want it to be a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner when I paint. And I'm going to start painting that in the center of the clock. So I'm going to paint the whole center. And I don't want it to be really dark. So I'm going to continue to add water a little bit as I go around my circle, just thin it out a little bit so it almost has a wispy look and it's picking up, it looks like it's picking up a little bit of my, my numbers. So I'm getting a little bit of a gray look as well, which is okay, I'm, I'm happy with that. Gives it a little bit of a mystical look. And I'm just, even if there's a little bit of, a look like it's a little bit of white or it's not quite even, I think that adds to the clock. So I'm still, I'm using the same brush. I'm just using light feathery strokes. I'm just holding the brush lightly. So again, if you're holding your brush really tightly, just take a deep breath and just relax. Just hold it a little bit lighter and you'll find that the paint will flow. And then on the outside, around the clock, around the, uh, the face, I want to add the same blue and I'm just filling all around. I'm going around my flower. I don't wanna fill in that flower. So at the top, I wanna to be sure my stem stays white. So go in between my petals, in between my leaves. So this is a project that takes a little, little bit more finesse. This is where when we're doing something like this and we're really focusing on what we're doing, it takes us out of the world of troubles and what's going on around us. And we just become aware of the moment, exactly what we're doing right this moment. And again, if, it, if your blue isn't coming exactly even, that's okay. I'm adding a little bit of water just to pull that color down so I don't have to add a whole lot more. Then I'll add a little bit and let the water move just some of that down. So I'm just adding a little bit of water each time, adding a little bit of paint and then a little bit of water. And we've left enough time in between by doing the brown that the green edge or the green blue mix edge that we've done should be dry. So if we hit it, if we hit the edge, it won't transfer. And it's just going to take a little bit of time to go around those tiny flowers or flowers that you've got drawn at the bottom. So we just want to go around those and just leave those petals because we will be and the leaves, so we will be making those petals into a bright yellow color and we'll make the leaves and the stems into a green. So 
So you don't have to worry about copywriting. This is a this is my original picture. I did find something very similar in a book, but I made my own variation. So we have um, we have an original. So if you decide um, your picture is good enough to sell, then you can sell it. You have my permission. You're not copywriting from anyone else. So I'm just touching in and around those flowers so that I get the, the little edges covered. But I do want to leave the flowers white for now. So you can see I just sort of touch and flitter around with my brush. I'm not so concerned about everything being perfect. If I hit an edge here or there, that's okay. I think this is one of the reasons why I'm not so keen on doing, doing uh, some of the mediums that take three and four days to dry. I like to have something fairly <laughs> finished fairly quickly. So for me to do oils that takes a long time to dry, it's just, it's, it's a lot for me to wait. And we'll remember to do around the back side of that sunflower stem right along the side of the clock. So you can see I have variations in my color. Some is lighter and some is darker. And if this is an old fashioned clock, then that's perfectly natural. That's what happens. Maybe the sunlight hit it and that's just changed that color. Now I'd like to read from my, my uh, May You Know Joy Meditations book. This is, this is my book that I like to read from. And today the, the card that I pulled out is May You Know Grace. So I haven't read this one before. So this is new. Um, May You Know Grace. May you stand in the beauty of your soul and allow it to radiate your own innate grace. This is your benevolent calm and beauty. It asks for nothing and simply indulges you with loving kindness. Bask in its warming glow. Feel it in your muscles and allow it to move you through the world with an elegance and ease and deftness that creates a ripple effect through the whole universe. So that was grace for today. I hope you enjoyed that. And I'll just see, are there spots I've missed? Yes, there's a little one there. And one of the other things that we do when we, we create art, and, and I believe I'm not alone in this, is because we sit in front of our picture for so long, even if it's an hour, and we look at it, we think, oh, there's so many mistakes and, oh, I'm not happy with this and I'm not happy with that. And so when we're finished, and I'll take the green tape off and we'll just sit back and we'll have a look at our, our pictures. Even if you take your picture and put it on a window ledge and look at it a few minutes later, you'll see it in a totally different light. You'll actually be able to appreciate a beautiful piece of art that you have made. So we're not going to do anything with the, with the numbers in the center for a while. We wanna make sure that that's completely dry. But with a yellow color, a medium yellow, um, this is the color yellow that I'm using. It's, it's, um, it's a medium yellow. And this medium yellow, I'm using fairly thick, not so much water, more paint than water. And I'm going to just sit that on top of each of the flower petals. So I've got some lines drawn and it's totally acceptable in a watercolor to have those lines still showing. I'm just having that sunflower just drape right over top of the picture, or just above the clock. 
And now I'm going down to the little flowers at the bottom. And again, I'm just sitting that yellow color right on top. Now watercolor dries 20 to 30% lighter from the time you put it on. So you may need to reapply that color. Say may, I, I think chances are we will be reapplying. So once you're done with the flowers down below, have a look and see if that yellow has faded up above and then reapply. I'm going back up to the top and I'm just reapplying a little bit more yellow as it's just faded a little bit as it dried. And I do want that bright yellow for a sunflower. Now I talked last week a little bit about doing some watercolor with salt. And I have, I have someone has emailed me and said, yes, they would be interested in doing that. Thank you. And I'm certainly willing to do that. Uh, but I would want, I think it, it would be beneficial if there were more people that wanted to do it, then we give them an opportunity to say yes, they would like to join as well. So if you're interested in doing the salt watercolor, which is adding salt to your backdrop, then please email me. And again, it's probably in the chat, but I'll just say it out loud. It's wildc188 at gmail.com. And if someone's you... asking what does salt do when you add to watercolors? I'll get the picture and show you. Salt allows the, the paints to flow differently and gives a nice soft background like this. So we would do this picture and we would use salt. So salt disperses the paint from where you put it on and it gives a nice flowy look. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll do the green and I'm not doing that lighter green now. I'm going with a little bit darker green, which is just a leaf green. If you have a second color green, if you do not have a second color green, then add the blue that you started with and the green together to come up with this outer soft color. And if you add yellow to that, you'll come up with a darker green. So that would be if you started off the very first color that we've done around the outside edge and the circle around the clock, was your light blue and your green mix. If you do not have a darker green than the green you started with, add yellow to that. And we'll come up with a different green because we're going to do the stem of the, the big flower. So that's coming off the top of the flower. I'm going to come right down alongside the clock. Mm -hmm. And again, if for whatever reason you go outside of your lines, that's okay. And we'll do our leaves in that green, but we will come back and add a secondary yellow to that once it's dry to give a little bit of definition. And we're going to do the leaves down below in the same green. Now, if you like this the way it is with just a white background, you're welcome to leave it with a white background. I like to give this clock a little bit of a surface to stand on. So it looks like it's not just out in the air. And so I'm going to use the same yellow that's in the flowers. with a little bit of water, just lightened a little bit. And I'm going to make the look of a surface just underneath, almost like a table. So I'm just putting yellow. 
at the bottom of the picture or bottom of the clock. And if there's some white spaces in there, that's okay. We're going to put a little bit of brown as well to give it a look like a floor or a table, like a wood surface that it's sitting on. So I'm not spending a whole lot of time trying to protect, perfect it. I'm just throwing a little bit of color on there. And then I'm going to take brown with the tip of my brush, just the tip, almost not touching. Well, that looks like I'm touching, but I'm just going to put some little lines to make it look a little bit like a floor. So just here and there that, we can do too much if we do too heavy a line. So we just want little dribs and drabs of lines. And in order to give it that look of flooring, rather than making straight lines up and down, I'm going to just, just like a hardwood floor where when they put the flooring down, they don't put the flooring with all the joists or all the joints together. They, they have them staggered. So we want a few joints here and there and not necessarily at the same spot. I have one here, but I'm going to, to put one just off center. It's almost like Humpty Dumpty. We're building a wall and so we've just got a few little lines here and there. So I'll just put that a little bit closer and you can see the bottom. that they're staggered. And now another option, if you like, well, we can actually add a little, I'm just gonna water down a little bit of that brown. And I'm going to put a little bit of that brown just, just here and there throughout. So it looks like a flo like flooring. I'm just, just kind of moving my brush around, just touching on a little bit of that brown, just to give a little bit of depth. It just changes the look a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of extra bit of that brown just around the bottom of where my, my leg is standing. Now on the example that I've shown, there's a very faded light green around the outside and you can do that if you wish. So now we're, I'm going to use black if you have uh, a, a highlighter, a gel pen, something in black. Or if you want to use a black paintbrush, you're certainly welcome to do that. Use that or an art pencil crayon or something else that you have. But you'll want a fine tip black pen. And I'm going to go over the numbers. So I'm just holding my, my pinky finger on my painting where it's dry, and I'm just going to touch on each number and make it more clear on my clock. Just being careful to stay away from my flowers because I think they might be a little bit wet still. And I'm just going over those numbers. And again, this is just practice. So if it's not perfect and you're not really not happy with it, then you certainly can do it again. And for my hands on my clock, I'm going to use a ruler. I'm just, I'm not going to actually set this down, but I'm just going to use a ruler. So I have a straight line. And so if I was going to put this picture into an art show and they asked what medium it was in, I can say that it has watercolor on it, but I also need to say that it has a different medium being a gel pen, unless it's a watercolor gel pen or, or what some other kind of medium besides watercolor. So that changes the name of your painting from being a true watercolor to being mixed media, which is okay. It's just something for you to know. So 
So there we go. There is my finished clock. I haven't done the background, but at this point, we're just a few minutes before the hour. So that was in one hour. Look what you've accomplished. Now on, on the example that I've given you, I have a separate flower that I've added. And if you have time, if you're not still working on the other parts of your picture, if you mix blue and red together, or if you have purple in your palette, blue and red together will give you purple. So you'll just need to see how much red you need to make purple or how much blue you need to come up with that, that color. And in order to come up with these little flowers that are off to the side underneath the sunflower, we're going to make these flowers. In order to make these flowers, you'll start, you can start at the top, you can start at the bottom, but they're wider at the bottom and they get bigger going up. And some of them just trail off a little bit. And we can make a few of those and it's just little dots a little bit bigger at the bottom than at the top with the green stem. We can add a little bit of leaf to that. Again, if you hadn't seen me do that, it's just starting at the top, just little dots all the way down. It gets a little bit wider near the bottom. And then a green stem and some leaves to fill it in. So that's again with the purple. I'm going to start up here. I'm going to put some little dots in. I'm going to get wider as I get to the bottom. I'm going to do a second one that's going to actually sit on top of the clock face. And another little one. And I think these are called delphiniums. And so I'll give those a little, a little stem and some little leaves that come up. And just like watercolor does, it dries 20 to 30% lighter than when you put it on. So I'm going to just touch on some of those little dots and just darken them up a little bit. And I don't have to touch all of them because when those flowers grow, they have light and dark throughout. And the fun part about these little flowers is you can actually give them direction just, just, just by curving that little end coming down. And I'm just gonna have a few petals that dropped off down the bottom. And the fun part about this is to take this tape off and see what we've ended up with. And so I'm gently going to take that tape off, starting away from my picture. And we'll see what that finished product looks like. There's the reveal. <laughs> there it is. I have a question for you. I okay. found uh, quite a few of my um, paint tube, but they are so dry. How do you open the lid after you left it in for so long? Are they watercolor or acrylic? Watercolor. Uh -huh. Watercolor. You may you may need to cut the tube open. Okay, so that's the only way, huh? And unless you're able to dip a brush uh, with water on it in the end of it. Okay. And get some Thank color, you. and then just transfer that color onto a palette. Thank you. You're welcome. Watercolor can be dry. And that's why we call it watercolor. We add water. Mm -hmm.